December 20th, 2014 from Crampton Bowl in Montgomery, Alabama. It was the Camellia Bowl between the South Alabama Jaguars and the Bowling Green Falcons. And so the Jags would get the ball first and they would start off on their own 20. But they would go three and out on their first possession. So now the Falcons would take over on their own 35 after the punt was still plenty of time left in the first over 14 minutes on the clock they would get into south alabama territory and on fourth and two from the 44 they went for it and james Kanapke hit roger lewis for a 44 yard touchdown pass so fourth and two they elect to go for it and they get a 44 yard touchdown and that put the first points on the scoreboard with the score bowling green seven south alabama zero and so now, with 12 minutes still left in the first, the Jags would get the ball on their own 24. But after five plays, they would punt it from the Bowling Green 49. So now the Falcons would take over on their own 7-yard line. They would pick up some first downs, and they would get towards midfield. They were faced with a 2nd and 8 from the 43. And James Kanapke hit Geiger Dieter for a 53-yard pass that made a first down on the 4-yard line. So it's now 1st and goal. And then Travis Green ran for 3 yards. And 2nd goal on the 1. Travis Green punches it in from a yard out. And it was now 14 to nothing. Bowling Green over South Alabama. So now South Alabama would get the ball on their own 11-yard line after the kickoff with still over seven minutes left in the first. And they would end up bringing the ball towards midfield. They were faced with a first and 10 on the Bowling Green 47. And they picked up three yards. And that made it second and seven on the 44. And that's when Kendall Houston ran it 44 yards all the way to the end zone for the touchdown to put the Jags on the scoreboard with the score Bowling Green 14, South Alabama 7. So now Bowling Green would get the ball on their own 19 after the kickoff with still six minutes left in the first quarter. They would go three and out and punt it from their own 16. They actually went backwards. And now South Alabama would take over at midfield after the punt on their own 46. And they got into Bowling Green territory. Then on first down, a false start from the 26. And then first and 15 on the 31. And Brandon Bridge was sacked by Ryan Thomas for a four-yard loss. And then two plays later, it was third and 19 from the 35. And Brandon Bridge was intercepted by Ryland Ward. And so now the Falcons would take over with the ball on their own 20 after the interception was still two minutes on the clock in the first. They would go three and out and punt from their own 16 as they actually lost yards. And so now South Alabama would take over on their own 33 with about a minute left in the first. And on third and 10, they picked up seven. It wasn't enough for the first down, but it was enough to bring the first quarter to a close. And the score after one quarter of play was Bowling Green 14, South Alabama 7. So now to begin the second quarter, the Jags would be punting from their own 40 after going three and out on the possession. And Bowling Green would take over on their own 20 after the punt. And they would go three and out as well on their possession. And they punted from their own 25. So now South Alabama had the ball back on their own 34 with about 13 and a half minutes left in the second quarter. And they would go three and out. And that was helped by a sack. Charlie Walker had a sack on second down. And so the punting unit came out a couple plays later on fourth and 17 from the 27 as the Jags went three and out. And Bowling Green now took over on their own 23 with 12 minutes on the clock in the first half. And they moved the ball towards midfield. They got into South Alabama territory. But then their drive stalled on the 21. And Tyler Tate came out to kick a 39-yard field goal. It was up. It was good. And that extended the Falcons' lead to 10 with the score. Bowling Green 17, South Alabama 7. So now South Alabama would take over on their own 30. And they would go 3 and out yet again and punt from the 32. South Bowling Green took over with less than six minutes on the clock in the second quarter with the ball on their own 14. And they got into South Alabama territory. They marched into the field. It was mainly on a 42-yard pass on second and 10 from the 28 from Napke to Moore. And that got them to a 30. 
then on first and five from the 25, an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty moved them back to the South Alabama 40. And on third and 21 from the 41, James Napke was sacked by Quadarius Ford for an eight yard loss. He forced the fumble and it was recovered by Davin Hawkins. And so now the Jags would take over at midfield on their own 49 with less than four minutes left in the first half. But then on third and six from the 47, they ended up fumbling. Brandon Bridge ran. He actually got sacked, dropped for a 13-yard loss, and he was he fumbled the ball. It was recovered by Bowling Green. So now they took over with two and a half minutes left before halftime. They had it already in South Alabama territory on the 40. A 12-yard pass on first down from Napke to Dieter. Made it a first down on the 28. And then on third and seven from the 25, Napke hit Giger Dieter again, this time for a 16-yard reception and made it first and goal on the nine. They weren't able to get in the end zone, though. And on fourth and goal from the four, out would come Tyler Tate to attempt a 22-yard field goal. It was up. It was good. And that extended the Bowling Green lead to 13 with the score. Bowling Green 20, South Alabama 7. So now the Jags would get the ball with less than a minute left before halftime. They had it on their own 25. And they ended up just bringing the half to a close. They actually got sacked. Brandon Bridge was sacked by Taylor Royster for a five-yard loss. Bowling Green took a timeout then, but then they just, South Alabama ran the ball, and we went to halftime. So at halftime, the score was Bowling Green 20, South Alabama 7. Now to open up the second half, Bowling Green had the ball on their own 22 after the kickoff. But after six plays, they would punt the ball from their 37. So South Alabama would have the ball after the punt on their own 33. And they would actually get all the way into Bowling Green territory. And they were faced with a first down on the 14. And they fumbled the ball. Brandon Bridge fumbled it. It was recovered by Kendall Montgomery. And now Bowling Green would take over on their own 15 with just under 12 minutes left in the third quarter. They would end up punting, though, six plays later. They did get a first down, but then they started going backwards. They got sacked. Malecki Harris sacked Napke. And so then after that sack on first down, they weren't able to get anything going, and they would end up punting from the 13 on a fourth and 26. So now the Jags would take over at midfield on their own 48 with still nine minutes left in the third, and they brought the ball into the red zone. And on first down, First and 10 from the 15, Brandon Bridge ran it in himself for a 15-yard touchdown run. And that made it a six-point game with the score now Bowling Green 20, South Alabama 14. So now Bowling Green would take over after a 30-yard return on the kickoff. And they had it now in South Alabama territory on the 47 to begin their possession. They picked up a first down, a couple of first downs. And on first down from the red zone on the 17-yard line, Travis Green ran it in for a 17-yard touchdown run to extend the lead back to 13 with the score. Bowling Green 27, South Alabama 14. So now South Alabama would have the ball with about four and a half minutes left in the third. They had it on their own 29 to begin their possession. They got into Bowling Green territory, but they would end up punting from the 46 after eight plays. So now Bowling Green took over with about a minute and a half left in the third. They had it on their own seven, backed up against their own end zone, especially if their false start would put them back on the three. But then on second and 13 from the four, Napke hit Ryan Burbrink for an 18-yard reception that brought the ball to the 22 for a first down. They then lost three yards, and the third quarter came to a close. So after three quarters of play, the score was Bowling Green 27, South Alabama 14. So now to begin the fourth quarter, fourth quarter Bowling Green had the ball on the, their own 19. It was second and 13. An incomplete pass will bring up third down. And then Napke ran it for a first down with a 13-yard run to bring it to the 32. But their drive would end up stalling. And they actually end up going backwards, and so they would end up punting from the 31. So now South Alabama would take over on their own 23 after the punt with 13 minutes left in this game, trailing by 13. And on first down, Brandon Bridge hit Danny Woodson for a 45-yard reception that brought the ball across midfield and all the way to the Bowling Green 32. And then they were faced with a second and nine from the 18 after having picked up a first down. And on second and nine from the 18, Brandon Bridge hit Demarion Buford Hughes for an 18-yard touchdown pass. And it was now a six-point game once again. 
this time with the score Bowling Green 27, South Alabama 21. So now Bowling Green would take over with a six point lead and about 11 and a half minutes on the clock just under and the ball at midfield at their own 49 after a 26 yard return. And then on first down, Fred Culpet ended up running 31 yards all the way to the 20. So they're right there on the edge of the red zone. They're then faced with a third and three from the 13, but a penalty, a pass interference call against South Alabama would make it first and goal on the two. But they weren't able to get it in. They actually got all the way up to the one yard line, but they got stuffed for no gain. And so then on fourth and goal from the one, out would come Tyler T to attempt an 18 yard field goal, and he missed. He missed the chip shot, and so the score remained Bowling Green 27, South Alabama 21. So Bowling Green had a chance there to extend their lead to nine, but instead it remained a six-point game. The South Alabama now took over on their own 20 after the missed field goal with less than eight and a half minutes left in the fourth quarter. But they weren't able to get too far. They did pick up a first down, but their drive stalled on their own 37, and out would come the punting unit. So after six plays, they punted. Now Bowling Green took back over with about six and a half left in this game in the fourth quarter. And the ball on their own 12, they would go three and out and punt the ball back to South Alabama. So now South Alabama took over on their own 27 with a little over four minutes left on the clock in the fourth, trailing by six. And on first down from the 27, Brandon Bridge hit Danny Woodson, this time for a 44-yard reception. That brought the ball across midfield all the way to the Bowling Green 29 for the first down. Then on second and eight from the 27, Terrence Timmons ran for nine yards in the first down. That brought the ball into the red zone at the 18. They were then faced with a third and three from the 11, and Terrence Timmons ran for five yards in the first down that brought the ball to the six-yard line, so it was now first and goal. They were then faced with second and goal from the three, and Terrence Timmons punched it in from three yards out for the touchdown as South Alabama took the lead by one with the score. Falcons 28, or rather Jaguars 28, Falcons 27, South Alabama over Bowling Green. So they led now for the first time in this game. And now Bowling Green, with just under a minute and a half left to play, was trailing by one point and needing somewhat of a miracle. And after the kickoff, they had the ball on their own 22-yard line, so 78 yards away from the end zone. And they needed to get in the field goal range, just trailing by one. But on first down, James Napke dropped back, and he hit Roger Lewis for a 78-yard touchdown pass. They went for two, it failed, but they were up by five with the score Bowling Green 33, South Alabama 28. So just when it looked like South Alabama was going to win this one by one, Bowling Green gets a 78-yard touchdown, and they're now up by five with just a minute on the clock. So now South Alabama, after the kickoff, had the ball on their own 22. Brandon Bridge then dropped back, and he was intercepted by Ajay Barima. And it was actually uh, tipped by Nick Johnson. But Ajay Barima ended up being in the right place at the right time. He gets the interception, and Bowling Green took over on the South Alabama 44. And they would end up running out the clock, forcing South Alabama to take their last two timeouts. And this game would end up coming to a close as Bowling Green Falcons come away with an amazing victory with the final score, Bowling Green 33, South Alabama 28. And in this game, James Napke was 25 for 39 with 368 yards passing and two touchdowns. He also had nine carries for 24 yards. And Brandon Bridge was 20 for 37 with 279 yards passing, one touchdown and two interceptions. He also had 16 carries for 41 yards and a rushing touchdown. And the game's leading rusher was Fred Coppett of the Falcons. He had 16 carries for 70 yards. The leading rusher for the Jaguars was Kendall Houston. He had five carries for 53 yards, including a touchdown. And the leading receiver was Roger Lewis of Bowling Green. He had four receptions for 137 yards and two touchdowns. Giger Garrick Dieter, Dieter had seven receptions for 108 yards, and Ronnie Moore had five receptions for 61 yards. 
And the leading receiver for South Alabama was Danny Woodson with six receptions for 122 yards. So Bowling Green wins this game. The final score, Bowling Green 33, South Alabama 28.